So where we left off, we had just finished writing up this UI. So now our user can come in, they can add reviews, and they can also give this movie a rating. Cool, cool. So back in our lecture, what we're going to do next is build out our route. This is going to be a post. It's going to live in our movies route. So down here, after our create, I'm going to add another post to slash colon ID slash reviews. So again, the full path of this is going to be localhost 3000 slash movies slash an ID slash reviews. And we have to be a little bit creative with our controller name for this, but with it, we're essentially creating a review uh, so that's what we're going to call our control function in our movies controller. Uh, David, question on that? Yeah. Is it more typical to create a separate function or to have like a flag parameter if you know it's like, hey, I want to create this thing, but I want to call it with a review flag or something to run that code? Uh, it would be more common just to create a new function. Uh, you're going to realize that these are all going to vary a little bit whenever we actually get down to it. Right. So it's going to be easier just to say, Hey, I'm going to build a new function for this rather than like trying to build up some modular system that you're like, I need to plug in this and oh, now I need to plug in this. And like, eventually that function is going to explode and you're just going to <laughs> want to break it up into smaller functions anyway. So we might as well just start with that step to begin with. Right, all right, cool. All right, so in our movies controller, let's go ahead and stub this up. We're going to have a function called create review. Just like always, we're going to have a rec a res, and we're going to console log something in here just to make sure that it works. We're going to need to export this function as well. Cool. So we're now exporting this function from our controller. And if we come back to our movies route, we could see, hey, we've changed color in here. We're good. We're linked up to an actual function that exists back in our movies controller. So now let's see if it works. Back to our browser. So I'm just going to submit this form. This is going to infinitely load, but if we hooked everything up right, we'll get the message in the terminal saying, I work. Cool. So we've built that up, we've stubbed it up. And now what we can do is finally add our review to our movie. How do we do that? We're going to find our movie by the ID. And we are using rec.params.id. Someone tell me why this is ID here. So that's what you've specified in route? That is exactly right. If we go back to our routes, we see the parameter that I have on the route is colon ID. So I will call this rec.params.id. 
cool. So we are going to find a movie. And then we're going to build out our error first callback function. We have a movie here. So before we continue on doing anything else, let's console log our movie. I have, okay, cool. I was like, I have an error, but I definitely don't have an error. <laughs> All right. So uh, this right now, again, it's just going to hang because I'm not doing any kind of response. But whenever I review, what I should get is the details for this movie that I'm currently looking at. So there we go. I'm going to stop this. And you can see here is our movie object. This is all the details about my movie. You can see that I don't have any reviews in here yet. How do I add a review? It's actually not too bad. We want to just push into that reviews array. So we want to do movie.push. Nope, not what I want. Movie.reviews.push. And the things that I want to push are on rec.body. Because this is a form. So I'm going to have a re the review content. I'm going to have the review rating. So I'm going to console log this movie. Why are we pushing? Because we're pushing into an array. So you'll see back up here, I have this reviews array. And what I'm able to push into this reviews array is going to be the review schema. If we come back to our model, I can push the review schema back into this reviews array. My review schema has content and has a rating. David, could you please console log your rec.body? I would love to. Wow. I should just make an alias for console log -y. All right. So we're console logging a few things in here. This is going to be our rec.body. This is movie before push, this is going to be movie after push. So let's go ahead and put a review on black window, black window, black window. <laughs> Haven't seen it. Five stars. <laughs> That's how that goes, right? So you'll see now in my console, I have quite a few things being logged. First off, I have this object at the very top. This is my rec.body. It has a couple of key value pairs. It has content. It has rating. It's getting this key name. Remember back when we talked about this a little bit more in depth yesterday uh, in our movie show. This key name here is coming from the name of my text area. So the name here corresponds directly to the key name of this object on rec.body. So I have a, a content property, and I also have a rating property right there. So this is my rec.body. And now you can see the before push in here. I don't have any reviews. This is my whole movie object, but it just doesn't have any reviews in it. And you can see after the push that this array now has a single object in it. 
you'll see that our document that we have added here has an ID. It has a content uh, property or field rather, and a rating field. Um, a great reason to do this is to see that this doesn't have timestamps on it. We might want to have that. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in here. So now I should have timestamps on the next one that I create. Let's try that and see what happens. I still don't. Let me restart my server. I don't have timestamps. I don't have, yeah, same. I don't have timestamps either. Fun. I'm pretty sure we need to add that. I do not remember now. Interesting. I did do that correctly, right? Yes. Timestamps true. That is right there. That should totally work. Interesting. Um, I believe that it actually, thinking about this, this actually isn't going to create it until we save it. If I remember right, 95% sure that's what's going on here. So that's what we need to do next. We need to actually save this movie in our database. So that's what we're going to do. And we are going to save our movie from our controller. With movie.save. Should we take out those console lock right now or you just want to leave it? I'll leave it for now. You can feel free to take it out though if you want. Okay. David, can you push as soon as you're done with this stuff? Yes, I absolutely will. So whenever we are done with this, I want to go ahead and redirect to slash movies slash, and then this is going to be the movie ID. Uh, these here are backticks, if you hadn't noticed, surrounding all of this. I'm doing a template literal here. So this is going to take us to the movie dot underscore ID. Oh, so are these all uh, route a bad tick or it's not um, when you only wanted the movie uh, show? I'm only doing one. that because I want the movie ID here. Okay, okay, okay. Because I thought I was doing it wrong. Yep, yeah. Push this. All righty. So now this create review function should work. Of course, we're not displaying it yet, but let's actually just double check, make sure that we're actually getting reviews in here. Uh, let's come in. And now I'm going to actually finally make this review. And then this should redirect me back to this page that I was just looking at, this movie slash movie slash ID. So these forms are going to clear out, uh, but it's not really going to look like anything has happened besides that. We'll go and check our database here in a second. So I'm going to add this review. Boom. Form cleared out. Hey, David. Um, I keep on pulling, and I'm not getting your code. Uh, are you fetching and then resetting? Yeah. Uh, you might try a git add before you do that. 
So get add dot and then do a fetch and then do a reset. <clears throat> Nope. Nope. Where That's is awkward. Controller, right? Yes, yeah. we are. The create review. Yeah, I don't see anything. Interesting. How about I just slack this over out in Slack for you? Did you need anything else besides this? Honestly, I'm not really sure. Okay. When I uh, submit a review, it's taking me to a, it's saying this page isn't working. This so, page isn't working. Let's see your screen. Yeah. Um, so here is my function. Oh, now I, wait. Now nothing's working. Um, can I, well, I guess I'm sharing, so, oh, wait. You're not sharing. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Retarded. Um, all right. So now, now am I sharing? Okay. So, yes, you're good. All right. So, um, whoops. Um, oh, wait, this crashed. So, um, cool. all right. So this is all working, but when I go here, let's just say, then it takes me there and it, this crashes. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm trying to find out where, if it's in my function or if it's elsewhere that's breaking. Down. Let's see, uh, let's check in your UI first. Okay. So, so the, your EJS for your show oh, page. Okay. Uh, show, there we go. Cool. And our form, you're not, oh, nope, you are closing your form tag. Never mind. Um, let's see. Got all of that. That all looks good. Okay. Use. Okay, cool. That looks fine. Um, uh, let's see your controller for this. Create review. After five, uh, you'll have a stream. After where? Shoe? Uh, line 62. The rec that prompts the ID. You don't need a code. Thank you. That's it. I think. Yep. I think it is. Yep. That should be it. Um, David, I think yes. my computer is wanted. I keep on, <laughs> I keep on adding the uh, function that you sent in Slack. Uh huh. Um, and it keeps it keeps disappearing for some reason. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's like, that's cool. Like, so that's why I'm just confused as to why it keeps on happening. Let's see your screen just to look at it. Okay. Um, I just added it, but now this is turning red and I'm assuming it's because of the route. Um, is it this? I don't. I need to I think be that would make it red, but you don't have anything here for it. Where's her review, create review route? It's not there. Oh. Does, do I have to so. do it? 
No, there's supposed uh, to be two. No, you're supposed to have another route. I'll just there's the one create and one create review. It but if in Slack. It's in Slack. Um, so this should be right here. Uh, that should be under that one. Yeah. Under this one. This isn't yep. currently. No. Uh, that one should be uh, mm -hmm. movies control. Uh, doc doc create. Create. There you go. Uh, I thought I thought it's only me who can fetch it, right? But it seems like I don't know. She's having a hard time fetching or. Yeah. I mean, it's my first time having a hard time fetching. I did it a couple times. It wasn't. I mean, oh, I always had a problem. <laughs> but now I'm, I'm now I'm fine. But why is this yeah. turning? Red? Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Yep, you're good now. Okay. Um, actually, oh, I was just gonna say I haven't been fetching today, but yesterday when I was, I I had to fetch twice sometimes for sure. You are not getting my most recent push because I didn't push my most recent change. That would do it. I'm very sorry about that. Not your fault, though, if that makes you feel better. OK, I'm going to, yeah, whenever you push, let me know. I'll, I'll pull, because I think Got there's it. in my code that's a little weird. I pushed just now. So yeah. um, I'll actually I don't think there's any changes. No, we're good. I just, all my code's up there. All right. And we aren't supposed to see anything when we submit a review, right? Just to nope, talk. you shouldn't see anything yet. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly confirm that that is in our database. And you can do that using Atlas. I'm going to get into my Atlas extension. I have my same attached database from yesterday. Look inside my movies resource. I do have some performers in here because I've gotten a bit ahead. Uh, but if I look at my most recent, that's not my most recent movie, it should be this. Perfect. You will see my review that I just created on Black Widow. So this review has a rating. It has an underscore ID. It has content. And it's also got timestamps as well. I don't see my review there. Uh, you might need to refresh this page. Uh, also double check and make sure you're in the right document as well. The right movies document. I only have one. You refreshed your page in here with this little, there's a little refresh button. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. I don't know, David, if you have the same error. After I fetch it, um, it's always showing me the line 17 where the for each function is like some kind of error. In what file? Um, view movies index EGS, um, line 17, movie for each, maybe because my data is empty. Uh, whenever you go to this page, oh, no, um, whenever I do the local host, um, it's uh -huh. showing me the error on the line 17 for each. I know you're cutting out real bad so there for a second. Years, I'm sorry. 
like I'm just saying okay I think um so yeah I think I got it because I don't have any data that's why every time I try to do like all movie or like load it it's showing me the uh, error for the line 17 which is a for each end function maybe because there's nothing there yeah if you, no, you don't have any data it. then you'll have yeah, some yeah. issues no, probably all right so uh in here now what we want to do is actually show these reviews on our page so, so because we're embedding everything that's why it's all contained in that same document and our database right yes if exactly embedding and referencing it would be a whole separate document that then we would have to somehow reference to that so say we were referencing this all this would look like is and please don't do this on your own database but it would essentially look like this instead if we were referencing and that would basically be the reference to the other document that that lived in exactly yep I'm all right. In, 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 in the Azure, uh -huh. like I am not, I, I think I'm having, I know you already dealt with this a little bit, but I'm not seeing my reviews either, but they are becoming part of the object when I console log a new, like a, a new review. But okay. I'm not seeing them show up in the Azure database. Did you do this refresh? Um, let me try that. Cool. I Got it. Thank you. Sorry. That's what oh, I No, know. you're fine. You're cool. All right. So uh, next, what we're going to do is make a table to throw all of our movie reviews on. So I'm going to come back in here and go back to our movie show page. Uh, I am not going to write this out, but I will copy it over and explain it. I'll throw it in Slack for you too. So it is in Slack for you. And on my page, I'm going to place this. So what this is doing is saying, if we have movie reviews, print this table. And we're going to go over those movie.reviews in a loop, a for each loop. And we're going to see when it was created. And we're going to turn that into a, a local time string. We're also going to see the content of that review. And we'll see the rating. So this happens if are if we have anything inside of our movie reviews. If we don't have any reviews on a movie, we conditionally show no reviews yet. This is really, really important. I bet you'll see this on an assessment, how to do this or something like it. How you conditionally uh, render something. Can you repeat that, um, David, please? Absolutely. So what we're doing in here is we're seeing if we have any movie reviews. If we do have the movie reviews, we're going to just throw all that data into this table. If we don't have any movie reviews, we're just going to render this H3 that says we don't have any reviews yet. Simple if else statement, conditional rendering with EJS. So now if we go back in our browser to Black Widow, we'll see that my review is here. You can see the date that the review is made on. You can also see the review text. 
and you can see the rating. Any questions about this? Um, so is there like a way, okay, so you got one review. What about if you have several review? Does it gonna like all show up in the table? Or is it like, do you have to push it somewhere? There you go. Oh, there is. It's all just going to show up on this table because we're looping over each one of our rows with a for each loop. So for every single movie review that we have, to, we're creating a new row. Will you go to a different movie and see if um, the one that doesn't have a review yet? So just yep. see one. Totally. Got it. Cool. Any questions about this? All right. Uh, if I remember right, that's pretty much the lecture. So, um, there is some stuff in this level up uh, that is uh, just kind of ancillary stuff uh, that you're free to look into on your own. I'm not going to get into this though. Uh, so, uh, there is a way to receive sub documents that are embedded inside of Mongoose arrays. Uh, we are able to remove sub documents from mongoose arrays, um, and we're able to query for documents that contain certain sub documents. Could you clarify what makes an array a mongoose array? Um, just that it's a array inside of our mongoose model. So, like here, we have review scheme an array of reviews. It's just an array. All right. So uh, check out the level up for all of those things. I do have some review questions for you. So uh, we can just come off of mute and answer these. Uh, so, and you can see the answer to this on my screen right now and how we're doing it with one of them and not the other one of them. True or false, all schemas must be compiled into a model. True. False. False. Is it false? It's false because, so this review schema up here, it lives inside of our movie schema. We're never actually compiling this review schema into an actual model itself. We're only compiling the movie schema into an actual model down here. Oh. Would you, so if it's not compiled into a model, it means it's probably part of another schema. Is that that's yep. being compiled? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Well, no, I got it. I got it. So that's why when you do the uh, local host movie, all movies, uh, you know, the if it's not review yet, it's just a part of that model. It's not right. a different exactly. model. Yeah, I got it. Yep. Got it. One hundred percent. Okay. All right, is it more efficient to embed or reference related data? Embed. Yes, embed. exactly. More efficient to embed. All right, and true or false, we saw this earlier. Uh, whenever I made a bunch of fake reviews that never actually got put into our database, but an embedded subdocument must have its save method called for it to be persistent in the database. True or false? True. True, true. yes. If you don't save your movie, then none of the changes that you made to it are actually going to be saved. Save with the timestamp, right? So it's updated over time. Yep. All right. That was Mongoose Embedding. Thanks for sticking through. Uh, referencing will obviously be on another day. Um, I don't want to even get started in on this. So uh, there will be a slight refactor that we do whenever we do this. We're going to remove the existing uh, cast array from this, you'll see. Uh, and then we're going to essentially build out a new model, all of that stuff. 
And that is what our movie model is going to reference. Is that performer's model that we create. Uh, that will be next week. Uh, does anyone have any questions on what we did today with embedding? I guess just for clarification for me, yeah. is 31 on this models thing, is that where we're actually doing the embedding? Yes, that is where we are embedding. Okay, okay perfect. Yep. Okay. We're saying that all of the reviews are going to be an array of this type. Any other questions? Sorry, I had a, I had a real quick one too. Um, on yep. the, the three questions you you asked a second ago, you you were talking about the dot save. Mm -hmm. you, you're saying you have to save the parent element, right? Correct. Or yeah, one hundred percent. So in here we call movie dot save. That is what actually saves our movie. So in the future, when we're like updating existing records, are we going to be or existing documents, you make changes and then you use save to kind of commit those changes. Yeah, exactly, 100%. And the redirect there, technically we could redirect anywhere, right? It doesn't need Absolutely. to be there. That just makes the most sense. Yeah, so say we wanted to redirect to slash movies more than possible. We could have our review come in here and say, this is a movie. I could add this review and now it's going to take me to slash movies. So the most important thing is just that save and then the redirect just makes sense to put in there because obviously we don't want to just stay on that same page with everything, but. Right. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if you answered this. Um, I don't know, like with wit, but why are we saving the movie in the create review function? Uh, so because we are coming in here and we are pushing the review into the reviews array that exists on the movie document. So oh, because we're following. working with the movie document, we're manipulating the movie document. All of this is embedded inside of that movie document. We then need to actually go and save said movie document. Where is the movie document? The movie so document as, is, is this. Oh, okay. So this is going to be like, this is our movie and our reviews are attached to this movie directly. So um, again. That erase is in the cloud, right? The one that we just created. Yep. So now if I go back to rules of attraction, you'll see this review is associated with this movie. Uh, David, can I ask you a redirect question? Yeah, sure. Um, I was trying to figure out, like, if you needed to send information along through with a redirect, you can't, right? You're just kind of nope. screwed. What? should is there just like a different way you should be modeling so that you never have to use that or is there a workaround like let's say you're on a, a page that is like a second like a second show page for like an embedded uh thing so let's say in in our if we had a separate page where we could put these reviews in instead of on this mm -hmm. one and we yeah. needed to redirect and we wanted to be able to like delete something on that page <laughs> how like, how would you be able to delete a review and have it redirect back to that page without it breaking any information it would need? Like, so you would just redirect back to the page that you're, uh, if I'm reading you right, back to the page that you would currently be on. Are you saying, like, say these reviews existed on another page, right? Yeah. That's kind of what, you, okay, cool. And yeah. say that there's like a delete function here. Yeah. Right. So you should be able to click here on that delete button and then essentially redirect back to this page. Whenever but you redirect this... back to this page, the index function is should be running again. Oh, okay. So there should be a way that this page will still be able to get the information it needs. Right, yes. Interesting. You probably okay. pass the parent's uh, key or the parent's ID to the child so that when you delete the child, you can right before that reference the parent's ID. 
that makes but sense. But there's no way to pass that information at that point, I think is the issue. Cause you can't read, you can't put anything through the reader. So you'd have to do it through the index. Like I think like- David You can said. do something like this, like what we did before, mm -hmm. where we have the movie document here. Yeah. So we can throw the movie dot underscore ID okay. in here if we wanted to. Interesting. Okay, I'll have to look into that more. This, it seems like it's doable. Yeah, it should be. Cool. Any other questions? All right. So we're going to do another round of Fist to Five. Fist, you feel awful. All of this is miserable. You're completely lost. You don't understand anything. Five, I can teach this. I know all of it. This is great. I love every single second of it. Please never stop talking to me, David. Where do you fall on this spectrum? Let's go. Four, three, four, four, three, 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 four. Okay, cool. I've, two and a half. Okay, cool. I'll take it. All right. So three and a half. Perfect. Okay. So I, I feel really good that you all feel better about this than you did on what was that? Uh, Monday. <laughs> uh, you've learned a whole lot more since Monday. <laughs> so uh, the fact that you all feel better about this now than you did on Monday is that feels good to me. So um, of course, if you need any help on this stuff, uh, as you know, we move through the weekend and all of that, feel free to post in the engineering channel, especially as you're doing your labs and you're running into little tiny problems, which you're almost guaranteed to have. I think that's most of our troubleshooting time has been spent fixing like single tiny typos in your projects. So uh, of course, you know, feel free to use the engineering channel to get some extra eyes on what you're building. Um, all right. Um, to be honest, David, yeah. So yeah. like, uh, remember that chart that you were explaining in detail? The, it'd yeah. be great yeah. if you can go over it again, not today, but like, you know, sometime in the future. Yeah, 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 totally. I kind of get it, but I, I don't too, kind of. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, whenever you are doing your uh, lab for this, you should be able to follow that chart again for, the, uh, for your flight. Whenever you do the show page for your flights, you should be able to follow that same exact chart. It's going to be pretty much identical, not entirely identical, but mostly identical. Um, so I like I would hold up that chart and keep it handy. Uh, that links off in case you didn't see it in the lecture. Uh, in this embedding lecture, if I go about halfway down through it, there is this whole page here. All of these charts are exactly the same. They all have the exact same information on them. Um, they're just laid out a little bit differently. Uh, so I would highly recommend maybe potentially going out and printing this and having it nearby you. Maybe that might help you write your show functions potentially. Uh, that's what this kind of black and white one's for, just so that you're able to, you know, print this out and not feel too bad about it. Put, put so. it in your screensaver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make it your background. <laughs> um, cool. So uh, that's, again, back in the lecture. This is also inside of your lecture supplements as well. So this movie show walkthrough images. Um, let's see. I am going to have all of you fill out the survey for the week real quick. Make sure that it's, I've got the right one. Give me a quick second. Um, and then I'll come, we'll come back after you all are filled out this survey and I will introduce the lab to you. Uh, that's a ticket. Um, 
not what I wanted. Cool. Uh, I will slack this out to you as well. That is your survey for this week. Please fill out your exit ticket. Your feedback is wildly appreciated. Um, and actually, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce your lab real quick. So, um, move some stuff around just so that you all aren't wildly confused looking at this calendar. Okay, so part two, part two of the flight lab. Yes, this is going to be part two of the flight lab that we are talking about. This is going to continue off from where part one left off. Same files or same directory, all of that stuff. Pretty much exactly, kind of, not exactly, but mirrors what we have been doing in class today. Uh, so this is, you're going to be doing some embedding stuff as part of this lecture. Uh, so. Sorry, the, are we on week six or week uh, seven? This currently is week five. Week five, okay. Yep, almost halfway through. So, so week six? Yeah, week six, Zach. Good job. Thanks, buddy. All right. So in this uh, part two of this lab, your goal is to essentially be able to add the ability to specify an array of tickets for a flight. Uh, again, styling on this is secondary. Please only work on styling after you've implemented the functionality. Uh, so as you go through this, uh, you have your uh, ticket schema that's going to provide the structure for how you're going to embed your ticket subdocuments, and then you're going to add some properties into your flight model as it exists. And then you're going to implement these three user stories. Uh, there's some hints down here at the bottom. And there's also a couple of bonuses. Uh, one is to style, and then two is to add in a feature to delete a flight and to uh, be able to delete a flight's tickets. Uh, if you do get to a point in your flights lab where you have a ton of flights and you don't necessarily want to implement uh, the ability to delete flights, something you can do is always go into Azure and then just right click on whatever collection you want to delete. That's going to bring up this menu here. And then you could say delete collection. And you can say delete. That will get rid of all of your flights all in one fell swoop. You're also totally free to come in here and delete individual documents as well. And that will remove them from your MongoDB. Why would we want to delete? Um, it just, you know, I know that some people have gone in and they've made like hundreds and hundreds of flights probably. So if you're one of those people and you're sick of looking at all of those flights, you can just go and delete them all in one fell swoop. Also, uh, whenever you add in the functionality that you need on, uh, next week into flights, uh, you are going to want to delete your entire collection. don't get too attached to your flight data. All right, does anyone have any questions about this homework? Um, this is going to also be due along with parts two and three combined on July 15th. Everyone happy? Everyone good? Cool. Guess what, you all get to enjoy your last hour and a half of the afternoon. I'm going to let you all go early. Thank you for sticking with me all week long. This has been quite a journey, <laughs> to say the least. Thank you. So, for thanks, David. I'm, I'm relying on uh, YouTube to go over again. <laughs> <laughs> I read some stuff, so sometimes like I need, I, OK, what did David say by this part? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> what did we do in the last part? 